Are we live now? Okay, I guess we're live now. <clears throat> All right, welcome, 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 everyone. Welcome back to mm. our uh, Qual Phone Dubigate Facebook Live. And today we have uh, somebody from TAB or Talent Bridging, uh, Paul Bahas, right here. And my name is Dwight, and I'll be, well, your host for today, I guess. So we're going to talk a little bit about TAB. Okay. And we're going to talk <clears throat> about uh, your work and um, what else? We're going to focus on uh, one particular aspect, which is uh, Filipinism. And it's one thing that a lot of people are very challenged with. And I guess we would need you to shed some light on that <clears throat> topic. OK. so. Well, let's go ahead and um, welcome Paul. Uh, Paul, can you, <clears throat> or friend, <laughs> yes. can you uh, maybe tell us uh, a little bit about you? <clears throat> Hello, everyone. Uh, I'm Paul. Everybody calls me Paul. That's why I, I want to be called by it. <clears throat> but you want to be called what? <clears throat> uh, Paul. Just Paul. I, Paul, I, OK. <clears throat> my, name is, my full name is Paul Edward Vidal Baha. Okay. I actually taught in Foundation University for many years. <clears throat> I heard eight years or more? Yeah. No, just eight years. Eight years, okay. Yeah. I, I was in the academy for eight years and my mother has a training center here in Dumaguete mm -hmm. and then I was kind of handling one program there. <clears throat> mm -hmm. Because the training center is TESDA accredited. And then right. I handled the contact center services. NC2 program. Mm -hmm. And then we had a partnership with Qualphone, and then I think it was last year That's <clears> right. that I met with Qualphone together with the other training centers in Dumaguete. Mm -hmm. And during that time, the director of, I'm not so sure what her title is, uh, the director of education, education yes. Miss Jocelyn, yes. <clears throat> was actually there. Mm -hmm. And uh, I was presenting the program of our school to. Mm -hmm to all the trainers that were mm -hmm. present during that, that time, and then she talked with me. That's why I'm here now. It's not that I left my job poor mm -hmm. <clears throat> because I was offered this position. I was actually already decided okay. uh, to maybe explore mm -hmm. uh, another opportunity. Okay. And I think it was very timely. What made you say yes to Miss Jocelyn? <clears throat> By the way, uh, shout out to Miss Jocelyn. Hello, what made you say uh, yes Ms. to her? Because I, I believe that you, you uh, thought about that decision, uh, or before making that decision, you thought about a lot of things. Right. Because the first time we met, she was so friendly, mm -hmm. I did not even know she was the director. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> because she's so down to earth, yes. quote unquote. And then we were talking during that time, and then she, she was so friendly to me. But then during that time, I was still on contract uh -huh. with the university. That's mm -hmm. why I said I could not give you my yes yet. Okay. And then probably when my contract ends mm -hmm. in the university, I can give you my decision. I thought about it for many times. Okay. okay. <laughs> and then it was last March, I think, when I received a call from her when she came back from the States. Mm -hmm. And then during that time, I, I thought about it very carefully. And after a week or two, I think, mm -hmm. when my contract at the university ended, I finally gave her my yes. I remember <clears throat> having a meeting with, uh, with you and Miss um, uh, Jocelyn. And uh, that's like, uh, that was like, I think last year. Mm -hmm. And um, right. there was already a little bit about, uh, you know, inviting you to come on board yeah. and all that. Exactly. And we were very happy that you did say yes. Mm -hmm. you did. I'm also mm -hmm. very happy with my decision. Mm -hmm. The the parting was quite bittersweet, I would say. It was not easy to leave the university. Well, you've been there for eight years, and you've had a lot of memories there, I guess. Right. Mm -hmm. uh, it was not easy to leave my students. Mm -hmm. But I think my objective now is <clears throat> is not only to teach mm -hmm. students, yes. but to also help them get a job. Mm -hmm. So I think, I'm not saying that my job before was not fulfilling. Well, yeah. it, it's just that now I mm -hmm. feel fulfilled every right. time I see 
tra trainees, for example, who have been in my class mm -hmm. and then finally get the job that they right. want. It becomes full circle for you because you saw them at first struggling and then you taught them how to make things better for themselves. Right. And then after that, to see them land a job, that's what you get to say, okay, <clears throat> that's it. Because I can totally relate. When I was a student, I was, I was also like them. What do you I, mean? I, I, I did not know. <laughs> what do you mean? I did not know everything about English. Mm -hmm. When I was in high school, well, like, <clears throat> when I was in elementary, for example, my grandmother would always like ask us mm -hmm. to visit her house together with the other grandchildren, mm -hmm. and then she would taught us the alphabet and then the sounds of English, etc. But then during that time, I was not so interested in the language, actually. Right, okay. <clears throat> Although, when I was in elementary up to high school, I would mm. always get the Best in English Award. So it was innate. It was something that you I, were I don't know. born with. I, I don't know. I, I can't <laughs> say. Where would you attribute that uh, ability to speak in English well? Uh, where did <clears throat> that come from first? First of all, I would like to thank my my teachers. <clears throat> when I was in high school, for example, I thought my, my English was so good, but mm -hmm. then when I, when I went to college, mm -hmm. I first majored in English. I took AV English, mm -hmm. and then during that time, my, my teachers were so good. Mm -hmm. Like, every time they would speak in front, I was mm -hmm. always in awe, my jaw would drop. Right, okay. And then <laughs> there was this speech teacher of mine, her name is <clears throat> Dr. Roulette Cordevilla. She's now with Nora, so she's really good. Yes, <clears throat> yes. And every time she opened her mouth, I would tell myself, I, I want to speak want to be like, like she does. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Have so you achieved I, that yet? I don't know. <laughs> I, I cannot say. I cannot say. Uh, I also had really good grammar teachers, like Miss mm -hmm. Finningon, Mam Godan. Mam Hinaldi, for example, Dr. Cecilia oh, Hinaldi, yes. the former Dr. dean Hinaldi. of the college. Yes, of, uh, of mass communication. communication. Yeah. <clears throat> I, I can't really say, Dwight, that it's innate because mm -hmm. we are talking about skills here. Right. We are talking about communication skills. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> and I always tell my students this because sometimes they get discouraged mm -hmm. because they're already like 25 years old or 28 years old. Or maybe and sometimes older. they think that it's too late for them to improve. Right. I always try to encourage them that it's never too late. And that's another type of <clears throat> challenge when they already think that, when they already have this mentality that it's too late for me to <clears throat> learn this. Right. In, in fact, when I was in the recruitment de department before, when I endorsed people, mm -hmm. uh, you mentioned a quote which I really liked. I don't know who was it. That was uh, um, Henry Ford, <clears throat> I guess. Right. What but, is that again? Whether you, think you, uh, whether you think you can or cannot, either way you're right. Right. Now you're right. Okay, uh, <laughs> because we are talking about skills here, and then unlike talent, for example, mm -hmm. which is innate, which yeah, is actually right. more, uh, I always tell my students this, so those people who have been in my class before, they know this for sure, mm -hmm. <clears throat> that when you're born with a talent in singing, for example, <clears throat> even if you don't enroll in singing lessons, voice lessons, etc., you really sing well. And that is going to surface, nevertheless, exactly. that, 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 that uh, talent. Yeah. Right. However, when you talk about communication skills, this is something that can be improved. Mm -hmm. This is something that can be acquired and can be taught. Right. It just depends, I think, on the effort and practice mm -hmm. you put in. Right. Because <clears throat> for many years that I've been teaching English, I've witnessed a lot of people, I've witnessed a lot of students improve mm -hmm. from being so shy to somebody who's very articulate. Right. And sometimes it comes as a surprise mm -hmm. to some people because five years ago they were not like this. True. And then five years after, they're shocked. And they completely changed. They, exactly. Here in town, for example, that's why <clears throat> I want to talk about it because there were some there were some people who, who like failed mm -hmm. the initial interview and were endorsed to tab. So the challenge of a trainer is to help him or her improve her communication skills or his communication skills. <clears throat> but sometimes these students have little or no confidence at all in yes. themselves. That's why that's another challenge. And because it's very, yes. very challenging. And you may also interact with people who have given up already on you know, improving. Right. <clears throat> and 
Yeah, the challenge there is how you can tell the person, hey, there is still something more that you can come up with uh, than this. The challenge there is to convince them that they can achieve more, especially yeah. when you know you've already come of age and uh, you've been <clears throat> jaded with all these things in life. Exactly. I I always do that because <clears throat> uh, for the past years my background was always in the academia. Yeah. I really don't have any background. So in how it. different is it? Like academia, and now you are in in, <clears throat> in the call center industry, and you're doing training. Uh, our talent bridging program, Correct. and uh, we basically help uh, people who have challenges in, in speaking and in confidence <clears throat> uh, to make them better and make their, their lives better. Correct. It's pretty much the same actually, it's mm -hmm. just that when I was in the university, I would really <clears throat> do my best mm -hmm. and teach my students because I wanted them to learn. Right. I think that nowadays, wherever you go, no matter what your major is, mm -hmm. By the time you graduate college, for example, and then you seek employment in any company, mm -hmm. communication skills would always matter. Right. And whether that's what I always say also to my trainees. Exactly. Whether you're an engineering graduate, mm -hmm. a nursing graduate, a medicine graduate, for example, all of us will undergo an interview. Yes. And you cannot, for example, justify your poor communication skills by telling the interviewer that that's not my poor, my poor communication right. skills because I did not major in English. Right. That should not be an excuse because there were a lot of people who majored in something apart from English. Let's True. take, for example, mathematics. Yeah. But they have excellent communication skills. Well. Yes, definitely. Why then are you giving me this excuse? Although, I totally understand why, because English is only your second language. That's <clears> right. And, and if we're not exposed to that all the time, right. we tend to not because, really know because, it very well. Because the thing there is, the way we speak English is always influenced by the way we speak our native language. Definitely. If Unless we don't for have example, a good reference, it, exactly. I say, okay, this is how it should be done. Especially right. when we know English only um, from, let's just say, not really a, a, a very uh, good source. Let's just say <clears throat> we learn English from uh, TV. Mm -hmm. I mean, not the, the, the like English films, but I would say like TV um, local or whatever. Right. I, I'm no, no, no offense to you. <laughs> yeah, I, I don't mean anything about that, but it's just that uh, you, you have to learn it from the source that's authentic. Mm -hmm. If you want to be able to speak uh, real good English, you have to listen to someone who speaks really good English right. so you're, you're able to adapt and uh, copy how that person or you know that set of people would speak. True. Because <clears throat> when you learn the language, you do not just learn, for example, grammar. There are a lot of things that you have to consider, right? And in the so Philippines, much. I always tell my students this, because in the Philippines, depending on which region you come from, yes. there will always be this same oh, wait. example. Hold on. <clears throat> <laughs> I forgot. Hey, it's okay. <laughs> okay. And, oops, there you go. Okay, talent bridging program. Mm -hmm. uh, depending on which region you come from in the Philippines, mm -hmm. there will always be this unique, uh, say, accent uh -huh. that you have. And sometimes it's so hard to get rid of it right away. Of course, it takes a lot of getting used to. Mm -hmm. What do you what do you talk about? <clears throat> uh, good communication skills, especially in English. Right. Uh, because when, when I teach my students, effective communication skills. Mm -hmm. I do not just basically focus on grammar because, well, grammar is one thing, of yeah, course. Part, yes, but it's not everything. Right. But one thing I learned because I also have foreign friends and I have like Korean friends, for example. Mm -hmm. I have Japanese friends, etc. And when I was trying to learn their language, I learned... You were trying to learn like Japanese? No, when I was in college, <laughs> I took three foreign languages. Oh, actually. okay. Wow. <clears throat> yeah. Because I majored in mass communication in right. Uh I was required to take two foreign languages, but mm -hmm. I think there was still one, there was still one room uh -huh. for more, and so I. So chose, you took that opportunity to help with more. Right. Okay. So I took uh, Korean, I took Mandarin, and I and I also took French, and it was actually a very good experience because mm -hmm. it opened my eyes to the idea that when you learn a language. The most important thing about it is that you learn the rhythm. Yes. And that you learn the music of the language. That's true. Let's say, for example, uh, <clears throat> the Korean language. 
I knew Anyang Hasayang before. Mm -hmm. I know what Anyang Hasayang means. But when I invited my friend to come over in Foundation University before, That's right. I, I, I told him to sit in an, on one of my classes, mm -hmm. and so he did. Mm -hmm. And my students, because they're also learning Korean, they greeted him. Okay. And my students said, Anyang Hasayu. Like that. Anyang Hasayu. But right. my friend. With the middle. With the, uh, <clears throat> right. Middle my year. friend did not understand them. Uh -huh. Because y y you actually say, Anyang Hasayu in Korean. So when you say you, <laughs> Does that change the meaning? It does not, but you're not understood. It, it's, it doesn't make sense. It does not make sense. Uh -huh. It okay. is not a word. Okay. It is not a word because the Korean language has its own music. Uh -huh. It has its own rhythm. Uh -huh. Like for example, if I'm going to introduce myself in Korean to you, I would say, okay. <clears throat> for example, 안녕하세요. 저는 폴리입니다. 저는 실리만을 졸업했습니다. You amaze me all the time. <laughs> no, no. Right. How is Before it amazing? Like, manado, pangapsumida, kamsamida. You really have like, to have that, you know, that rhythm. It, exactly. Uh -huh. Like the falling and the rising of the voice. It should be there. That's very important. Which is why I always tell my students this. That when you learn English, it's also important to learn the, the, the music of the language. Because right. you hear from others that they're mm -hmm. Filipinos who speak in English but sound very Filipino. Still, in, yeah. in our in our place, for example, they sound very Bisaya, quote unquote. Mm -hmm. I don't see any problem with that why. Do not get me wrong. True. But this is a call center industry. And you have to speak the language the way our customers speak the exactly, language. Exactly, exactly. So we but can just murder it. Even if even if we talk about Filipinism, we talk about words, we talk about expressions that are bungled mm -hmm. by Filipinos. Because they said, nah, well, Filipinos always claim to be the best speakers of the English language. Mm -hmm. But according to some experts, Filipinos actually are the ultimate subversives. Because oh. there are a lot of expressions, for example, there are a lot of words that mean different when mm -hmm. used in their context. That's but true. mean different in our context. That's true. Right? Mm -hmm. uh, I think the, the, the disconnect there is because we don't really know the essence of what we're really speaking about. Mm. It's, kind of, it's kind of like when you, uh, when a lot of people uh, would try to learn the language, they kind of learn it from just the surface and not really have to immerse themselves. And, and, and uh, I guess that's part of having to learn the rhythm of, of, of the language and having to know exactly uh, what it is. Because mm. uh, we sometimes copy how they sound, but not really exactly <clears throat> Uh, uh, the full meaning of uh, what we're trying to say. Right, but what I'm, <clears throat> what I'm also concerned about, Dwight, is there are some Filipinos, for example, who really try to pull off an accent and it does not sound natural at all. It sounds, I, I, um, not, it's, it's totally awkward. fine. It's totally fine if you have a neutral accent. <clears throat> and it's so totally fine if you have an accent. I do not have an accent. As long as you don't try. Exactly. Yeah. Because instead of trying to impress people, I think you're trying to annoy them. Yes, because they know it's not, it's not real. It's not really coming from you exactly. yourself. And then one thing more: uh, the thing about uh, not just Filipinism, but the way Filipinos speak the language is that the way we pronounce. Mm -hmm. And I think it's because every time we speak in English, we always refer back to our own language, True. which should not be the case. When you speak in English. The thing that you have to remember is you also have to think in the language. That is true. Right? That's why Filipinos, for example, when they speak in English, they always try to translate mm -hmm. their sentences yes. from Filipino to English verbatim. Yes, and that's which what you call transliterating. Exactly. Trans Transliteration. Yep. <clears throat> which actually results in awkward English. I even had a colleague before in the university who said that Filipino English is weird. <clears throat> I did not... <laughs> I, I did not take offense in that because somehow he was also right. Well, to, uh, it's to, just so that kind of you're suddenly looking at it, uh, let's just say you are uh, looking at it through uh, you know, a person who really knows uh, the, the English language very well, yeah, it might be weird. Right. Uh, but the, the thing there, Dwight, is I think you should not generalize mm -hmm. because uh, there were a lot of foreign students, for example, in like in Silliman mm -hmm. before, I, would, I used to tutor yes. uh, foreign students before. Mm -hmm. Because once you get <clears throat> started, mm -hmm. sometimes, for example, your your tutee would refer you to somebody else. So I would receive a lot That's of right. calls before asking if I was free for 
Well, of course. Services, whatever. <laughs> but I was still a student back then, mm -hmm. and so I didn't have much free time. Mm -hmm. uh, the thing about there is they tend to generalize that Filipinos, mm -hmm. like all the Filipinos, speak this way. But hey, here's Dwight, here's me. No, you should not generalize. Mm -hmm. And the, the, the objective of the, the TAB program of mm -hmm. Alphum is basically to help people <clears throat> not only improve their communication mm -hmm. skills, but also land a job. Yeah. Going back to what we do in TAB, for example, we try to reduce uh, the accent mm -hmm. of, of some of the trainees that we have. Mm -hmm. How do you do that? I mean, <clears throat> uh, give me a picture of how it goes inside your class. So give oh. us a picture. <laughs> okay, uh, for example, yes. we, do, how do you uh, do it? we do linking. Mm -hmm. or, because when Filipinos speak in English, our, like each of the words in our sentences is very clear. Mm -hmm. Right? It's 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 spoken with equal emphasis. Exactly. And when you talk about English, which is the relaxed version, yes. quote unquote, they they do linking the why right. that, that is why it sounds fast and it sounds relaxed. And I'll for example, it's a little bit blunt the way we pronounce words. It, it, it's, exactly. It's blunt. If I say for example, I am I'm a Filipino, for example, like you say that right. and then in English you say I am a Filipino. What is it? There. There's right. that, con that connectivity between each syllable. Exactly. And then one thing more is that talking about pronunciation, I think this is a major challenge for some of the Filipinos because <clears throat> although it may be true that mm -hmm. in the Filipino language we also have five vowels, mm -hmm. which is actually the same. True. The same is true for the English language. It's just that they differ because when you talk about phonetics, when you talk about the sounds, yes. the sounds of the Filipino language are very limited. True. There are a lot of sounds in the English language mm -hmm. that are not present in the Filipino language. Take this one for example. We have five vowels, mm -hmm. right? In the Filipino language, you have A, E, I, O, U. Mm -hmm. In fact, we, we say our vowels by, by saying their sounds. Yeah. A, E, I, O, U. The way it <clears throat> is uh, seen, that's how you pronounce it. Exactly. Be because it follows, uh, it follows the rule in mm -hmm. the Filipino language, which is kung paano ang pagbigkas ay siya din ang pagbaybay. Right, exactly. I heard that from you during the last time. Right, I always say this. This yeah. is what I want to, mm -hmm. to share with, with anybody who is in my class, mm -hmm. because this is very important. Mm -hmm. Communication skills are very important, because wherever you go, it will always be yours. It will be your edge over yes. the years when you apply for a job. For no matter what, that's what they always say. No matter what job you will be applying to, whether it is in a hotel or in the government or in an office or in the fast food, you will always have an advantage because you get to uh, be remembered right away. Mm -hmm. Oh, that person just speaks well. I, I like that person. Mm -hmm. and you're able to <clears throat> communicate, and it, it breaks the ice between you and your interviewer right away. You make a good impression. Mm -hmm. That's right, but going back to what I said a, a while ago, like five vowels, but we only have five stable sounds for mm -hmm. these vowels in the Filipino language. True. However, when you talk about English, you take the vowel A, for example, Dwight. Be, I, I, I'm, I'm trying to emphasize on this because mm -hmm. the way my some of my trainees would, would speak in English is just not so good, I would say, mm -hmm. because we are training them to become call center agents. Yes. And we don't want uh, like miscommunication mm -hmm. or no communication at all to happen in the call center industry because even if we do understand them, mm -hmm. given their mispronunciation, yes. etc., we are Filipino, so we totally understand yes. that they might just have mispronounced a word. Or we would be able to understand, oh, that's what they meant. I exactly. But when you talk about a Filipino talking with an American, it would be hard for the American. And what you have to realize is when you talk about effective communication, in order for you to become an effective communicator, you should realize that communication is a two-way street. That's right. It is not a one-way street. Just because you understand yourself mm -hmm. does not mean, for example, that you're effective. True. You have to be understood by the one listening to you. Right. Because it is a two-way street. Mm -hmm. and that, I, I always mention this one because every time I go to my lectures, mm -hmm. for example, if even when uh, there are offices, there are schools that invite me mm -hmm. to give lectures, 
Um, there was this one time that uh, the division, Department of Education, mm -hmm. the division of Oroqueta invited me, and then mm -hmm. they came okay. over. I did not go to Oroqueta. Like they the, came. Okay. The principals, the superintendents, they really came over to Dumaguete just to listen. This Friend, you're so powerful. No! <laughs> uh, just <laughs> like, just put that in my lecture. Good, yes. And then we, we had a lecture in one of the hotels mm -hmm. here in Dumaguete. What I liked about it, it, Dwight, is that even if these are professionals, mm -hmm. even if we are talking about principals and superintendents, yes. they're very open mm -hmm. to learning new things. Right. And I think, they, because... So what were they able to take away from that? Like, what were you giving away to, to, the, to, to, you know, to, to that group of people? Money. I, I, <laughs> I wish I was there. <laughs> I, I, was, I was just kidding. No, I, I was also talking about uh, communication, by the way. Mm -hmm. because, because, of course, uh, that's my major. Mm -hmm. And where was I? Yeah. I'm very forgetful nowadays. <laughs> okay, uh, during that time, for yeah. example, mm -hmm. because I really don't like my lectures to be boring. Why? You know, we've been there with Donna before. <laughs> we, we, we abhorred boring classes. So as much as possible, uh, as much as possible, we always want our classes, our lectures to be interesting. So right. before I go to lectures, though, I, aside from knowing my audience first, True. I also try to make ba on jokes. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yes, and and jokes appropriately I, for the set of people you're gonna, you know, tell jokes. I to. know because right. because I believe that language learning should be interesting. True. It should be fun and interesting. Because if it's not interesting, it's not fun. It kind of do not does not really stick. I know. It sticks more to your memory when you had fun, you know, learning uh, that <coughs> thing. Great, that me having. Sure. Cheers <laughs> to that. Thank you for the sense <laughs> by the way. Okay. <clears throat> Where was I? So learning should be fun and you have your, yeah, your right. jokes. Learning together. should be fun and interesting mm -hmm. because one thing I noticed was <clears throat> when I was teaching in the university, there were some students who I knew had ideas in mind, mm -hmm. <clears throat> but they're very afraid to speak right. and to voice out their mm -hmm. ideas in classes. Why do you think that is so? <laughs> that, that, that fear? Probably because maybe their experience before was kind of traumatic. Mm -hmm. you, you know how it is in schools, right? right? When you mispronounce <clears throat> something, it becomes an inside joke for days. Ex exactly. Because when you're Filipino, your classmates would expect that your English is good. Otherwise, you will become the object of ridicule inside the class. That's why I don't want la language learning to be a traumatic experience for my students. Or have you also observed that sometimes uh, people will not, although they know how to speak the language well, they tend to <coughs> not speak correctly because they also get you know, comments like, oh my gosh. You know, you're trying too hard. Because uh, you know, know. to a person who is able to speak well, they'll just, you know, hold it down because, you know, people might think that questions would think, ah, oh, my gosh, you're trying to impress <clears throat> everybody. Right. Um, <clears throat> but over over the years, though, I I've, I've never really thought that the kind of English I speak is like OA English, quote unquote. Mm -hmm. It's like RP RP English, <clears throat> because as a teacher. I always try to teach effective communication. Mm -hmm. And you know Filipinos, if if the favorite pastime of the Americans, for example, is basketball. <laughs> Where uh, are you going with it? Our state, <laughs> right, you have to agree with me on this. <laughs> okay. If the, the favorite pastime of the Americans is basketball, the favorite pastime of the Filipinos is liba. When your English, for example, is good, even if you're doing the right thing, <laughs> okay, right, right? even right. if you're doing the right thing, you know you're doing the right thing. Mm -hmm. But to some people, you come up, you come across as trying hard. Or people will unquote. always have something to say, whatever the case is, whether you do it well or not. People will always have something to say. Do you agree? Uh, yeah, that's one thing I learned also. As a teacher, I do not expect everyone to yeah. like me. <laughs> right? Because even if you do not like me, that's none of my business. I True. couldn't care less. Yep. Right? Because one thing I learned, and I always tell my, my students this, and mm -hmm. anyone in the audience listening to me, mm -hmm. that no matter how good you try to be towards everyone, there will always be... Like, People will find something to No, I don't about. want to say the word action. Okay. Because... 
it might be offensive. <laughs> there will always be people who will not like you, mm -hmm. and that should not be the case, do I? And that's Especially okay. if you're speaking in, in English. I always tell my students to speak in English every time, because there's no other way to improve your English but to speak it on a daily basis. Exactly, <clears throat> exactly. But you know what, in, in the Philippines, English is always associated with the elites, right? That's like right. when you're rich, it's, it's normal when you speak English all the time. Like in the Philippines, for example, if somebody is rich and somebody is like mestiza looking, that then person. she is speaking in English. Ah, English is okay. Yeah, we always have that's association. Good. That's, that's true. true. That's true. In fact, even in the academia, even when you, when you talk about schools, English is always associated with intelligence. True. But, but, but actually, it should not be the case. Right. Once a, once a person, for example, speaks good English, Right away, people will, will say that mm, you're intelligent because your yeah. English is so good. Because also, yeah, if that's connected to uh, if a person speaks good English, then that person must be rich and must be able to afford going to a good school. But what I don't like about it, Dwight, is that they tend to generalize that when you come from a private school, mm -hmm. your English is good. Well, the only private school... And that when, when your English is not good, you, you, you come from a public school. I came from public school, elementary, high school. Is it was the only college when I was able to go to a, a, a private school. Right, because I think learning is really up to the student, regardless of what school you mm -hmm. come from. Okay, so tell me this: How do you change your trainees' minds about you know the the the, the current um, way they think about English and how to learn English and all that? <clears throat> How do you do the, the, the cause you gotta change their minds about their perception of, of English and that, you know, learning it. Mm. How do you do it? Mm. I mean really in class. Because I know that you, there are things you say to really make them understand that learning in English is something that they can do. Exactly. Mm -hmm. You have to make them understand. You have to make them understand what the language is. It's very important. But the thing about it, Dwight, is the more you learn about the language, mm -hmm. the more you get confused. Mm -hmm. because, because there are a lot of people, for example, who are very confident in the kind of English they speak. Mm -hmm. I'm not saying their, their knowledge of English is limited, though. Mm -hmm. But it's just that when they learn more about the language, that's the time you realize that you do not know everything. That's right. When I was in college, when I majored in English, I thought, okay, this is so easy, mm -hmm. right? Because mm -hmm. <clears throat> when I was in high school, I would always get the best in English award. That's why I majored in English yeah, first, okay. before I majored in mass comp. There we go. And then after that, when I was in the room, and that all my classmates were English majors, and, and of course, when, you, when you're when you with your classmates who are also majoring in the same field you are, <clears throat> you can't help it, there's a competition. Now, they might not say it, but of course, there is always a competition. Because it is, well, speaking, especially in English, is a skill. Right. You tend to, you know, flex. A, 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 exactly. Those skills. And then the thing there, Dwight, is I was very confident. I was I very was confident. confident. All the time. <laughs> During the first day of classes, I was very confident. Okay. And then when my, when my teacher got inside the room, and then when she started speaking, mm -hmm. I didn't want to speak anymore. Because I thought, oh my god, really? She made me realize that there are a lot of things about English that you have to know. And that's what I make my students realize do I mean? right from the get-go. Right. I always tell them that, <clears throat> hey, if you really want to get this job, you have to speak not, re not necessarily the way native speakers yes. do. Because, of course, you cannot do that in just a matter of two right. weeks. What we do usually is, uh, what I do usually is, I encourage them mm -hmm. to read books, right. to speak English every day, which is mm -hmm. why even if they feel awkward, they don't have any other choice but to speak with class, their co trainees yes. in English. They would even tell me, sir, we were in the downtown area yesterday and mm -hmm. then we were talking with each other in English. And then what happened? He said, people were actually looking at us as if we have, we have committed the biggest sin, <laughs> right, in our lives. And then I told them, just do not mind the people around you. Mm -hmm. This is actually a problem, George, because I think my, my friend told me this. He, he told me this. He's actually Indian. Mm -hmm. And then he told me this because this was his 
this was his observation. Mm -hmm. And then he told me, you know what, Paul? I think many of the Filipinos are not living a happy life because they always think of what other people think of them. Right. Right? Always living up to expectations. Exactly. Of people. Like, uh -huh. when there are people around you, you do not speak in English because you're afraid of what they are going to think of you. Mm -hmm. Which should not be the case. You, it, it, whatever they think of you is none of your business. It's the approval of people around you that would matter more. No. Uh, I, I, that's I, I, the I mentality. Believe, right? I, I believe, Dwight, that you do not have to see mm -hmm. other people's validation. Right. Because the greatest validation you can give yourself is believing that you can, for example, mm -hmm. right? And that's why you, you do not need other people to right. validate you. And that's why you keep on telling them on the training, do not mind people outside of you, you know, of your sphere commenting about you because that's you practicing. Exactly. Mm -hmm. um, the first time that I started teaching in the university, I would have students trying to mimic the way I speak. For example, repeating the words that I say. So, for example, if I tell well, them... Well, if that's the way for them to improve, then why not? <laughs> exactly. But the first thought, the first thought I, really, I really thought that they were mocking me, and then I felt offended. Because, for example, when I would tell my students in an effective uh, communication class, mm -hmm. I would tell my students, if you really want to improve your pronunciation, you, you have to check right. the dictionary. And what you have to do is you you look for the symbols that are enclosed in parentheses. And then somewhere in the background, Dwight, I would hear people say parentheses, parentheses. Mm -hmm. And then I thought they were mocking me. And then... They were trying it out, actually. Exactly. Okay. Because I, and then I asked my student, <laughs> why, why, why is it that you keep repeating my words? And then one student answered, um, Sir, because why, what I thought was, you, you pronounce it as parenthesis and not parentheses. Mm -hmm. So parentheses to them sounds new. Yes. They, they are strangers to the word parentheses. Mm -hmm. But in the Philippines, Dwight, whether it is plural or singular, both of them have the same pronunciation. Mm -hmm. And I think that's what you have to make them realize. True. I, I, I told them, for example, well, well, you have one that's an open parenthesis. Yes. You have another closed parenthesis. So these Let's symbols are enclosed in parentheses. That's right. 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 So I only try to make them realize. Okay. Uh, yeah. That's why every time, where like where wherever they go, they would always try to familiarize themselves with mm -hmm. the sounds of English, especially mm -hmm. for example the symbols in the in the international phonetic alphabet. I, I think, like any student that was in my class before, mm -hmm. if you would ask any of them, mm -hmm. they will always remember me by the lessons I teach them, mm -hmm. particularly the International Phonetic Alphabet, which mm -hmm. is basic, which basically focuses on pronunciation. Yes. Because aside from grammar, well, we learn grammar, we've been learning grammar since elementary. Since so some, sometimes, uh, most of the time, the grammar that we learn <coughs> would be just head knowledge. <clears throat> right. But when we actually put it into practice and actually speak the language, we don't know where to put where. Right. That's true. But it also has something to do with the syntax of the language. Mm -hmm. What you have to realize is English has a different syntax from the Filipino language. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. When you talk about linguistics, for example, uh, English follows the subject verb object syntax, true. while the Filipino language follows the the verb, subject, object, yep. syntax, right? That's right. So sometimes when we speak in English and then we translate our thoughts. Okay, from for the purpose English. of our viewers. Okay, so the uh, English syntax would be? Would be subject, verb, verb object, object, syntax. And give us, a, give us an example. <clears throat> for example. example. So we can differentiate. Okay. I like to eat. I like to eat. Mm -hmm. When you talk about grammar, I is the subject, That's like right. is the transitive verb, mm -hmm. and then to eat, which is an infinitive, is actually the direct object. Because the direct object actually begs the question, what? So what did I eat? I, what do I like, like to eat? eat? Right? There you go. Well, so it receives the like. Exactly. It receives the action of the verb. Mm -hmm. I like to eat. But sometimes even when I present that one to my students, mm -hmm. they would identify to eat as the verb. 
because it looks like a verb. And fact of the matter is, it is a verbal. Right? Because we have three verbals. We well, have infinitive, you have gerund, and then you mm -hmm. have a participle, mm -hmm. right? These are words that look like verbs, but they do but not they're not function mm -hmm. as verbs. That's right. Sentence. So it follows that pattern, S T V D O. Mm -hmm. Subject, transitive verb, direct object. Mm -hmm. I like to eat. Translated to Filipino, it becomes ganahan ko mukaon. Ganahan is a verb, ko is the subject, and then mukaon is the object. So, so basically, they, yes. these languages, these two languages have different syntax. Yes. And that's what you have to realize. Mm -hmm. Because if you speak in English, and then you always refer back to your own language, the result is awkward English. Mm -hmm. And if I, were, okay, if I were to put myself on somebody who uh, does not really know about these things, I would say, you were right when you said the more that you know, the more you get confused. Exactly. That's true. Because, because English when is you, such when a you know about language. these technicalities, when you speak, you are now more conscious of doing it right. Right? <laughs> I, I know, right? Because every time I introduce like, uh, pronunciation to my students, even if at first they they speak English comfortably, mm -hmm. but when I introduce them to the IPA or the the, the sounds of English, mm -hmm. they start to become very conscious right. about the way they speak, mm -hmm. even if they're just uh, pronouncing words that are very simple. Mm -hmm. uh, it's not arte arte English, right? And I think you'll agree with yes. me. Okay. Uh, for example, as a teacher, I never change the way I speak, mm -hmm. depending on my audience. Mm -hmm. Because I believe, as a teacher, I should always serve as a role model That's to true. my students. Consistency, right? Mm -hmm. Exactly. Um, and that's what I want them to realize. Mm -hmm. Because they think, for example, sir, if we, speak the, if we speak the way you do, I think people will think oh, we are so arty arty, we are so okay. Uh, and then I told them, well, when, you're, when you know you're doing the right thing, there, you, you, you should not be embarrassed about it, bro. right? You, you would be more embarrassed if you're doing the wrong thing. There was this one instance, though, I, yeah. Yeah. Uh, I, I had dinner with my friends, and mm -hmm. then we, we went to one of the restaurants here mm -hmm. in Maguete, and yes. some of my friends are, of course, foreigners, and then mm -hmm. some are Filipinos. And then during that night, uh, we, were <clears throat> we were eating after, Finishing our meal, the, the, the waiter actually asked us if we would care for, for some dessert. Mm -hmm. Dessert, okay. Right. And so uh, I told the waiter, one, you, you give me one mango crepe. <clears throat> I said, mango crepe. And then my, my, my friends were laughing at me. Because, because, it, because they, you said mango crepe? Right, exactly. I said mango crepe. And then they were laughing at me. And then I asked them, why are you laughing? And then they, they asked me, hey, they, they told me, Do you want crepe? It's crap. It's crap. And then I told them, really? So what I did was, I I grabbed my phone, uh -huh. and then... <laughs> <laughs> right, that's, that's, that's what I do now. Okay, let them hear it. Okay, hear it. Exactly. Mm -hmm. uh, yep. That's what I did. So I grabbed my phone, I went to the Merriam-Webster application, mm -hmm. and then I... I typed the word crepe, uh, and then I pressed the audio button, and, and then, then I let them hear, and then it said crepe. Maybe it's crepe. because of the spelling that would say crap? Exactly. Well, they're they're crap. <laughs> I'm, just, <laughs> I'm just kidding. I'm just kidding. So, so the, the, the thing there, Dwight, the lesson there, Dwight, is they were laughing at me, thinking that I was wrong. Because, because they, are, they, they, they are a majority. Exactly, because to them, Crepe sounded awkward. Mm -hmm. It's incorrect. Because what they're used to is the word crepe. I, crepe. I mean, the, the word crepe. Yes, because I always hear people saying that. Exactly. Too. Wherever you go, in, in restaurants here in Maguete, they will tell you, oh, we, have, we have crepe. You will really know who those people are who know what they're talking about. Yeah, exactly, exactly. <laughs> right? And then, um... The thing there, Dwight, is they, they were laughing at me, thinking mm -hmm. that I was wrong. Mm -hmm. But then, I was right. The, the lesson, the, 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 lesson there, the lesson I want to, to, to tell people Sorry. is that 
not everything that sounds awkward in English it's is wrong. wrong. Exactly. Mm -hmm. It depends on what you're used to, and it takes a lot of getting used to when you want to speak very good English. I'm, I, I'm <clears> actually <throat> curious how they react when you let them hear the right pronunciation of the No, they, they, like, the room went silent. <laughs> okay. Really. And then, like, they were so loud, laughing at me, and then I was, I was not embarrassed, actually. If I'm with your friend, so. No. If, you, weren't, you weren't friends? So we were friends, okay. but I was not embarrassed when they were laughing at me because mm -hmm. deep inside, well, you know I knew right. they would be embarrassed if I would tell them they're wrong, right? True, true. Th that's why the thing that I want to tell people is that when you want to improve your communication skills, you should not think of the others and mm -hmm. what they think of you. Mm -hmm. You're doing it for yourself, not for them. What would be your advice to people who want to improve their communication skills, but let's just say uh, they have a lot of things that they're doing. How can they practice even though they're busy, or how can you know how can they still improve their communication skills although they may not have time to be on training or whatever uh, the case is. Well, guys, I always believe that busy people always have time, mm -hmm. right? Because when you're busy, that means to say that you're doing your job. Mm -hmm. you, you're very efficient. You get your job done on time. There will always be time for everything. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> for example, I work in Qualphone during the day. Mm -hmm. I work here from 8 a.m. to 5 p.m. And then at 5 p.m., I go to my mother's school, and then I train mm -hmm. people there as well. So sometimes the training starts from 5 p.m. until 9.30 mm -hmm. or 9 p.m. Mm -hmm. right. And so if you, if you think about it, if other people are working eight hours a day, I work for 13 hours a day. Sometimes it's even 14 hours a day. Mm -hmm. and so I it's not an excuse when you say you're busy. Uh, you can't always I do not incorporate it. practicing. It, when you really want to improve, mm -hmm. when you want to achieve something, mm -hmm. you would always have time for it. I even have time to meet with my friends. I even have time to go to bars and restaurants <laughs> with my friends, right? In fact, we have a plan tonight yep. together with the people from the recruitment department. So what I'm telling mm -hmm. you like is, it's never too late to improve. Uh, here in Tao, for example, I, I have trainees who are like 30 years old. Mm -hmm. I have tra trainees who are 45 so years old. So that mindset old. is and, wrong. And, <clears throat> it's, it's wrong because then again, I, 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 want to, I want to emphasize this. We are talking about skills here. Mm -hmm. We are not talking about talents. Well, it's called talent bridging, but we are trying to improve <coughs> skills, mm -hmm. and we are trying to teach people how to improve their English. <coughs> Although the the TAP program, I believe, of mm -hmm. call on is not a panacea. Mm -hmm. it, well, it's it's not the solution to everything. Yes. We do not perform magic tricks. We do not give you promises like after one week or two weeks. No, your English will be so good, and then you, you will get hired right. downstairs. It's just that some people, for example, when when they start attending TAB training, at first they feel hopeless. Well, no, I'm That's just true. doing this because I'm just taking my chances. I, I, I right? have people like that before, too. And I even had trainees right, who were like, who were o OFW. Mm -hmm. Sometimes it had, no. Let's put it this way. It has always been very emotional for all of us in town. Yes, uh, definitely. I, for example, can relate to my, to my trainees because I know their stories. I know their stories better than anybody else does. That's right. Uh, which is why, for example, when they get the job, when they start crying, I cry with them. Sometimes even I try to hide in one of the rooms mm -hmm. and I cry because I know how badly they need the job. And how they worked mm. so hard right. to get it. There, I even have this trainee who's from, who has been an OFW for five years, I think, and then uh, she came back to the Philippines because her experience abroad was not pleasant. Mm -hmm. And so even if she was earning enough for her family mm -hmm. because she's a single mother, <clears throat> not technically single mother because she was the breadwinner. Okay. Uh, she came back to the Philippines because, of course, she also wanted to be with her children mm -hmm. as they grow up. Right. She enrolled, uh, no, she applied first here in California, but then she failed the initial interview. And that's how she landed. But her English is not so bad. It's just that she's not so confident when mm -hmm. she speaks. Mm -hmm. And sometimes she gets intimidated. Is this recent? 
Yes. No, I think two weeks ago. Two weeks ago. <clears throat> okay. Uh, and that she gets intimidated whenever she's in front of the interviewer. Mm -hmm. uh, and I think that's normal because nerves happen to all of us. Yeah, definitely. And that's before the interview, I was so nervous. <laughs> now I feel very comfortable. And this is what I want to tell my, my, my trainees and to all the people yeah. listening to us now. When, when, you're, when you feel comfortable with the person you're talking to, I think everything will go smoothly. Mm -hmm. That's right. right. right? Just like how it is going now between the two of us. Mm -hmm. uh, I was very happy when she got the job because because I know how how badly she needed it, mm -hmm. and it would really change yes. their lives. That's right. Like not only hers, but also of her family's. That's life. true. <clears throat> uh, th that is why when when Miss when Miss Jocelyn, if you're mm -hmm. watching, hello. Uh, that's why when when she when she was talking about the tab program of yes. Ralph, when I was really very interested, mm -hmm. and then I wanted to be a part of it. And although I miss uh, Fu, I still feel very much fulfilled right. with whatever I'm doing now mm -hmm. uh, with tab and for for call phone in general because. Not only do I get to impart knowledge in my students, but I also get to help them. Not only I, but also <clears throat> the rest of the trainers, mm -hmm. the rest of the people that consist or who consist mm -hmm. the TAP program That's of right. Fall Phone. And in fact, uh, yesterday we, we met, I together with the other trainers mm -hmm. of, of TAP, that we really want mm -hmm. to reach out to even the neighboring towns. Right. Of, of Dumaguete. Because that's what, what Mel and I are planning <clears throat> to do. <clears throat> yeah. Be, because we, we know that there are a lot of people who need True. a job. And, and people who kind of do not really have the courage to, you know, come to us. Mm -hmm. So maybe we'll Mel, come to them. Well, like when you talk about a call center, everybody would think that the, 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 the initial thinking of, of people mm -hmm. is that you must have good communication skills, mm -hmm. otherwise you will not be hired. Right. Although it may be true, uh, you do not expect everyone who comes here to call phone and then trying his or her luck to really get the job. Yes. That's why tab. And you'll never know it. if you won't go out there and apply. Right. Um, you, you just basically have to prepare for everything. That's uh, right. there, and be ready to learn. Mm -hmm. Because in TAP, you will be learning a lot of things, mm -hmm. and to unlearn things, too. Yes. Yes. When, when you want to learn, you have to be prepared to unlearn. Mm -hmm. Because, like, <clears throat> every time I teach, I also realize that there's, there are a lot of things mm -hmm. that my students think are right. Correct. But when I try to teach them what is correct, it's hard for them to to execute yes. and to apply it because they're not used to it. And there's this tug of war because they still <laughs> think it's right. So uh, that what they thought at first was right, that having this new thing right. kind of makes it hard for them. And there's only one explanation to that mm -hmm. point. Uh, because it is very hard to unlearn whatever you have learned first. Yes. Even if you talk about our superstitious mm -hmm. beliefs, even if you talk about like even the word pasma, which does not have an English counterpart. Right. right, right? For example, our lovers have been telling us not to jump into the pool if you just peeled out uh, peeled your socks off. Mm -hmm. Right? From a from a training, for example, because yes. you will be pasmado or whatever. Right. So even if you go to the hospital and then your doctor tells you, for example, that it is, there's no truth in it mm -hmm. because it is the first thing you learn. It is very hard to unlearn it. By right. the time you go mm -hmm. home, you will still not heed the advice of the doctor because right. you will always remember the advice of your Lola not to wash your hands, not to wash your face when you've just read uh, for when you've just been mm -hmm. reading for a couple of and hours. And even if you already know that truth, you will still revert back to what you used to do mm -hmm. because that has been something that was like put inside your head, exactly. and it has become part of your lifestyle, mm -hmm. your way of thinking. So I guess speaking in English, good English, it is uh, going to take you to incorporate that into your own lifestyle, mm -hmm. not only <clears throat> speaking English within the training, Right. I guess. 
but I understand. <clears throat> what are you trying to say? I understand that some people do not have the confidence mm -hmm. to really speak in English all the time because mm -hmm. they have, they have, first of all, Dwight, they have no one to talk to in English. That's right. When they get home, for example, even if they want to improve their English and then speak in English, they have no one to talk to. People will not talk to you when you speak in English. So what would be the remedy for that? Because our, our environment, for example, to a person who would be going back home, the environment is not going to be conducive for that person to speak right. in English. Exactly. Like, hey, mom, uh, what, what are you cooking for tonight? I, 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 I know, right? Hey, mom, you go? Uh, well, uh, y y when you talk about communication, there is always this thing called, <clears throat> aside from interpersonal communication, mm -hmm which actually means like between, because inter is a prefix which means between. Right. People also have to realize that there is this communication which actually tells you, you, know, you can talk to yourself. Yeah. And that is intrapersonal communication. That's right. You face the mirror. You talk to yourself in English. And I think we, we will not be biased. We, we will know, for example, if we have a lot of like flaws, we still yeah. have, right? If, if your English, for example, if your pronunciation skill is not good, and then when you talk to yourself, you listen to yourself, of course you will not praise yourself even if, you're, you know, if your pronunciation is so bad. The thing is, even if you don't know how to pronounce, for example, words, words very well, but when you kind of practice and talk to yourself, for example, practice in front of a mirror, if you mispronounce words, you, you still know that it's not right, although you don't know how to do it correctly. Mm -hmm. You can't go like, I know it's not right, I just don't know how to do it. Uh, I don't know exactly uh, how to, to, to say this properly. Mm -hmm. But even though I don't know what, what the proper way of saying that would be, I still know it's, how I'm saying it now is wrong. Right. <clears throat> so practice is, is key and uh, accepting that there is still a lot of things that you, you, know, you can learn mm -hmm. and will still have to learn. Um, we do not have to speak perfect. Mm -hmm. quote unquote perfect English because if that's where the pressure is coming from for a lot of people right because just this morning though as I endorsed four people from the top training but technically just three mm -hmm. I not consider the other one because he's supposed to be here like after three months so I endorsed mm -hmm. three three people I would admit that I was not very confident in in one of them. Mm -hmm. But thankfully, I think it really is their time. Mm -hmm. I always believe in a, if it's for you, it's for you. Mm -hmm. When it's your time, it's your time. It will be given to you. Yes. I was not very confident. But then, before coming here, I was even very happy. Mm -hmm. Because because I was told that the three of them passed. Congratulations, no, by the way. Uh, yeah. I mean, uh, it, I do not take the credit. Mm -hmm. I, I, I always, I, I really believe that it's also because of their effort. Yes. It's Definitely. because they practiced a lot. <clears throat> Kudos to those three people. Mm -hmm. Congratulations. By the way, they're now, I think, in the downtown area processing their requirements. Yay, that's a good feeling. <laughs> right. I don't know, right? That's why it's, I, I think I should really celebrate mm -hmm. tonight. Um, but aside from that, Dwight, what I also want to emphasize is that because, you know, when, when Filipinos start speaking in English, some of them are not really comfortable speaking mm -hmm. in straight English. True, that is why true. we have this thing called bilingualism, mm -hmm. uh, or we do code switching. Uh -huh. What we do is, because we are not so comfortable speaking in straight English, we code switch. Mm -hmm. We use Filipino and then English. That's right. right. The thing there, Dwight, is, just as they're ill just as there is bilingualism, mm -hmm. can somebody also be by extended? Mm -hmm. What I'm trying to say is, what I'm trying to say is, if I speak, right. if I speak in Bisaya, for example, and then of course I also try to use English words, tendency there, Dwight, is the English words tend to sound Bisaya also. Yes. It, if I tell you, for example... You mix them up together. Uh, the switching. Uh, Dwight, tomorrow... Uh, I will go to ano, the hospital because my that's right my grandmother man go na admit sa medical center ba ana so but, but tell me this call I have a way of actually mixing these two languages mm -hmm. and still switch from one to the other without having to bring the accent of one to the other right 
Dude, it, it takes a lot of getting used to Dwight. It, and I believe you, you you know how to do that very well too. For example, I can speak like Visaya at this very moment and then in the middle of the sentence switch to English and right. switch to English right away. Yeah, English sounds English yes. and then Visaya is Visaya. Yes. Exactly. You do not confuse the two yeah. languages. I think... You get to learn that over the years. <laughs> I think it's okay for me to say this. Yeah. But you have to respect Mm -hmm. Both languages. That's right. When you speak in English, you should sound like you're speaking in mm -hmm. English. You, you should not force it though. Well, if you practice constantly, it will mm -hmm. come out naturally. Mm -hmm. You do not have to speak in English all the time. You can still mm -hmm. converse with your friends in Bisaya. Right? It's not a sin to speak in Bisaya. It's just that it takes a lot of practice <clears> and time. Yeah. You can say, though, that uh, tomorrow, ba, Matumung Hospital. I think yeah. I admit medical center, and then kinangla na ko siya visit. Kaso na when you speak that way in in say Dumaguete, let's let's try to localize it. But when you speak like that, Dwight, you will come across as somebody who is arty arty, and you don't want that to happen. Which is why even if we code switch, we tend to be bi accented as well. Just so we can be within the norms. Uh, that's why. That's why. That's what I wanted to my students. That's no. You do not have to please everyone around yes. you. It's very impossible, Dwight. Wherever I go, I do not expect, mm -hmm. no matter how how hard I try, to be good mm -hmm. to be good towards everyone. Mm -hmm. There will always be people who will not like me. That's right. And that's totally fine with me. These are well, things they do not they like me. The, training? the feeling is mutual. Is, is this something that you really, you know, discuss during the training about? Uh, um, you know, when you tell them about not to mind, you know, other people. Uh, yeah, I, I always tell them that. Mm -hmm. I always tell them that. That's why I, I think um, eventually, and like maybe after a week or two, I, I start to see myself in them. Mm -hmm. Right. That's right. Well, well, because when you really want to improve, that's what bagat ka ug nawong dwight. And right? in, in, the, in the classroom, I guess, you know, you created this atmosphere wherein you can practice as much as you want, and nobody is going to laugh at you, if nobody right. is going to you. But no, Dwight, I, I always try to make sure that the the discussion, the lecture is participatory for of everyone. Uh, in, in my lectures, for example, uh, in my lectures, for example, my students have fun. For example, one, one student commits a mistake mm -hmm. or makes a mistake, say grammar, pronunciation, mm -hmm. whatso whatsoever. We we laugh. Yeah. We laugh, but it's not fun laughing but because we're trying to ridicule. Yeah. Exactly. You would know yes. that when the laugh, for example, is yeah. bugal, bugal, quote, yeah. unquote. Let's laugh about it because it's funny and then we'll move on. No, because we are trying to recognize the fact that nobody really is perfect. Mm -hmm. And you should not expect perfection from Filipinos. Right. The fact that you're already trying to learn the language is already commendable. That's a start. Yeah. That's why I really am appreciative of people who try to to speak in English and try to improve their communication skills without trying to worry about what other people will say. I bet you tap that is really, really fun, Paul. <laughs> well, here, um, can I please ask you to uh, like uh, uh, give a message to people out there who are you know, interested about uh, the talent bridging program, um, who are wanting to improve their skills? Um, you know, uh, can you, you know, tell them a little bit about uh, why they should uh, try out have. Okay. Um, <clears throat> to to those people watching us this afternoon, I would like to encourage you <clears throat> to come visit us here in Qualphone or wait for us to go to your place. Uh, we are actually set to go to Shaton, mm -hmm. Hinobaan, That's right. Luan, the That's true. even Kanlaan as far as Kanlaan, we're reaching out. Siki, Sikihor. I, I'm encouraging you on behalf of the TAB program of Qualphone <clears throat> to really try your luck in the call center industry. If you think, for example, if you think, however, that you still lack the necessary skills which you need to be hired, mm -hmm. do not worry because we in TAB are ready to help you. That is why TAB was initiated. That's right. Uh, in order to help people, especially those who lack self-confidence. Mm -hmm. It's, I, I'd say, Dwight, it's not easy mm -hmm. to, to improve self-confidence because yes. it takes a lot of getting used to. You have to expose yourself. The struggle is real for a it lot of people. It is very real. Yes. It's as real as global warming. 
it's as real as climate so, change, right? Okay, I encourage you to try your luck here in Kwahon. And for example, mm -hmm. if you do not make it past the application process, you can always come visit us. Uh, for sure, there will be a door to tab. Yes. Uh, the the tab basically is a program that helps people improve their communication skills, mm -hmm. especially those people who lack self confidence. If the the program might take one week or or two or two mm -hmm. weeks, depending on the result of yeah. the assessment, depending on the need of uh, uh, the, the the training also. Right. Mm -hmm. But the, but the beauty about the tab program is it's like competency based mm -hmm. because we really try to attend to the needs of our participants right. so for example uh, you your your grammar might be good but then your pronunciation is not mm -hmm. good yet right. we try to focus on that of course because mm -hmm. there are so, so, some people for example whose uh, pronunciation is good mm -hmm. but whose grammar isn't so we have to address that problem Yes. People do not have to worry that maybe two weeks is not enough or one week is not enough. The most important thing there is you try, yes. right? Because a lot of people are being pessimistic about applying in a call center because they're eh, not ready, I'm not confident. That's why if you come here, you should be confident. You believe that you, you can get the job. Well, to answer, like, I'm not ready, I would say come. Try it out, and we'll help you get ready. Right. This is what it's all about, basically. Mm -hmm. If you're interested, please go ahead and send us a message. Click that uh, send message uh, button right there. Mm -hmm. Talk to us, and uh, we would be happy to tell you about Tab and, and tell you about a call phone and what we offer. Because we have a lot of things in store for people interested to, to you know work with us, learn with us, and grow with us. So uh, that's why Tab is uh, put in place because it is our way of really making sure that we don't only train you, but we make you ready for the job and the real world. So that's what TAB uh, is about. Mm -hmm. So, uh, well, um, we have uh, kind of run out of time, but as closing, Paul, yeah. um, let's have a little Q&A. Oh, for you. What? Is, <laughs> what? Is, I'm not, I did not prepare for this one. Okay, so you have a bunch of celebrities right here. Right there, okay. And uh, I'd like you to choose a, a celebrity, and uh, they're gonna ask you a question which you will have to answer. Really? Yeah. <laughs> Wait, choose your celebrity, Paul. I I'm not so familiar with, <clears throat> with the others. Is he Elvis? Uh, yep. Yeah. I see, yeah, let's go okay. with Elvis. Okay, go with Elvis. <laughs> All right, Elvis, what do you have to say? Oops, sorry. Oops, no, no, no. That. Oh, <laughs> that is this? <laughs> Why are you not? Okay. How about the others? Uh, you choose. The others? You should. Mm. Wait, I should choose who? Elvis. Wait. Let's make this. You only have to choose one anyway. So. We'll look for, for Elvis then. Alright. There you, uh, there you go. Okay. As you get older, what are you becoming more and more afraid of? Explain. <clears throat> to be very honest with you, I'm always afraid of death. Explain. I'm always afraid of death because as a teacher, Dwight, <clears throat> I've always wanted to help a lot of people. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> Especially those people who are struggling with self-confidence, mm -hmm. struggling with finding a job. I always want to help them. Everybody mm -hmm. knows that I'm always, for, my heart goes out to those people mm -hmm. who really want to provide for their family. Mm -hmm. Th that is why sometimes this topic is, makes me very emotional. Okay. <clears throat> uh, as I grow older, I, I always, in fact, as I sleep at night, or before I sleep at night, I always think, will I be able to wake up tomorrow? Mm -hmm. I cannot imagine if I die one day, what, what then will my family feel? Uh -huh. But aside from that, I always think that I still want to do more okay. for people. I still want to help 
a lot of people. Mm -hmm. I'm not saying that these people get a job because of me. Right. It's not only it's because of me. I always call the class or the lecture as cooperative mm -hmm. or collaborative learning because right. aside from learning from me, I'm also learning from them guys. And you that it is a two way exactly. Yes. It is a two way process. So <clears throat> I because I believe that life is really a boomerang. Yeah. So if you good if you do good to others, it will, will come, come back, back to you. So, so that, there is like <clears throat> because that would mean to say that uh, if that happens, you would not be able to do what you do anymore. Exactly. And that's what you fear a lot. You don't fear death. You fear I'm, not being able to do what you do. Is that you know? That's deep, huh? <laughs> no, basically, it's, I mean, it's not the dying that you're afraid of. The act of dying, but maybe it is the. Uh, it is. It the is death. Of it. it is the, the. It is death itself. Because if I die, I won't be able to do the things that I do anymore. So basically, okay. like, yeah, I'm afraid of both. Mm -hmm. But I'm afraid really of dying. I, I do not know. So that's what, what you're mm -hmm. becoming more and more afraid of. Yeah, I'm also afraid of, uh, being broke. <laughs> Yeah, I think money is a <laughs> I, I really Everybody has that fear. Right? <laughs> I guess. So that's why we're all working. Right. That's true. That's why I always tell people that. Because a lot of people are asking me, don't you get tired? You work, mm -hmm. from, I, you work from 8 a.m. to 5 p.m. and you walk on, and then you work in your school mm -hmm. from 5 p.m. to 9 p.m. Don't you get tired? And then I always tell them, well, I get tired, obviously. But it's better to be tired than to be broke. And right. I think you'll agree with me. True. And you know, aside from just having money, I think what, what I see in you, to be very honest, this is, you know, uh, mm. less the char. Uh-uh, less the char. I would really say you're very driven, you know, doing these things that you do, especially that I guess you were born to really, you know, mentor people. I, I, I just believe that everyone has a purpose. That's why we're we're born because we have a purpose, and I think this is my purpose. Very good. If ever others, for example, achieve whatever they want to achieve with my help, mm -hmm. it's not because of me solely. It is because True. we help one another. And this is basically what Paul is here for. Right. And thus we have our uh, our uh, motto: be the best PPL. And make people's lives better. better. This is the purpose of Qualcomm, mm -hmm. and so thus we have, we have Tab, and thus we have you, yes. and thus we have this to let you know that uh, we have a lot of uh, things in store for people who would want to become part of our growing family. So, um, it's time. Mm -hmm. I'd like it's to thank time. everyone who's, uh, who's watching, and Paul, thank you for taking the time to be here. It's, it's, <laughs> it's my pleasure. It, it's, it's really nice talking to you. I always <laughs> enjoy talking right? to you. So, one hour is not enough. Oh, one hour, hour is not enough. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Later. Okay. <laughs> okay, let's do it. Talk till dawn. Mm -hmm. Anyway, bye guys. Thank you so much. I will see you next Friday. Mwah. Bye.